All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and let's continue the adventures into comparing the Yamaha CL1, which is a $16,000 board, to a Behringer X32, which is an under $3,000 board. The question is, is one board truly better than the other? What are we paying for when we spend the extra money on the Yamaha? And to be honest, I don't know the answer to that because there are too many variables. But what I can do is test various aspects and um, see what the results are. And um, there's some pretty surprising things and everything is not what it seems at first. All right, so uh, today I'll do noise. Um, in another video, I tested an X32 versus a Midas M32 and showed that the M32 had a lower noise floor than the X32. Today we'll do something similar, um, a little more grueling test. I've got an input into channel one coming out of sending to group one, out of group one into channel two, sending to group two out of group two into group channel three, sending to group three, and so on, all the way up to group six, channel six to group six, and then group six then goes to left and right, and it comes out of the console. I've also got the PFL bus hooked up to show up into the scope and into this small mixer. I've got the same exact setup on the Yamaha CL1. So we can look at cumulative issues. Um, so if I PFL channel one here and channel one here, we can see on the scope, the yellow line is the um, Behringer. And if I solo something here, the yellow should go away. And I solo there and the yellow comes back. So the yellow is the X32, the blue is the Yamaha, and the red is the difference between those two consoles. Um, I've actually got the X32 out of polarity so that they cancel and the red is a difference between the two. I've also got a word clock set up here on the Yamaha so I can alter the word clock frequency which will change the latency and allow me to fine tune the latency of the CL1 and by doing that get a better cancellation. Now, it doesn't really matter that much for this test other than I really want to show that these two signals are the same volume. So when we get into the noise test, we know everything's equal and fair. Uh, both consoles are set at or around 0 dB input and 0 dB on all the faders. When I say at or around, both neither board is completely linear and 0 all the way through does not equal 0 on the out. So I've calibrated them. All right, so that's PFLing channel 1. To channel one and if we go to channel two to two and we see that red line there is almost perfect cancellation if I alter the word clock here if I get into this piece you can see that I can get that red line to be very close to flat look at that when that red line is flat we have perfect cancellation um, now I can turn this up into the recorder here. And let's see if I see a signal. Um, I should see a signal. And we should be able to hear. Yeah, I can hear it. And I can see it there. Okay, so it's gonna be very low level. Um, I'll leave that recording and turn it down in the video edit as need be. All right, so that's two to two. Now the latencies are slightly off as I go channel to channel because the Yamaha has a two millisecond latency there in an aboust and the X32, X32 only has a 0.8 millisecond latency. A lot more latency built into the Yamaha. Um, and I've calibrated those out by adjusting the delay times on both consoles. Um, and you can hear my headphones barking up there. I'm gonna turn down that. And that's channel three to three four to four, five to five, and six to six. And we can see that we're a little bit off. Let me see if I can adjust that to get a really good cancellation there. 
Okay, so the fact that I'm able to get that red line really, really smooth means that I've got a perfect cancellation very close to it, which means that the output level and timing are dead on or very, very close. Um, and any shift in that will, you can see the difference between that red sine wave. All right, so now let's get into the noise test. So for this, I'm gonna switch this uh, Sound Tools mic switcher to B, and we see all the sine waves go away. And let's go ahead and raise the sensitivity on the scope. And I'm gonna get rid of the red trace now because we're not worried about canceling out. And I'm gonna go down to five millivolts per division. We are now looking at six channels in series of the Behringer. And I can go down the line. I can go down to five, four, three, two, one. And it doesn't show much difference in the amount of noise. Let's go ahead and look at the Yamaha. If I bring this to five millivolts, we can see the Yamaha. Now we got much lower noise, uh, not even close, a fraction of the noise on the Yamaha console. And that's six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, night and day, right? This board here is one, two, uh, it's the, the X32 has got one, two, three, four, five, ten times as much noise on the scope. Let's go ahead and give that a listen and see what that sounds like. So I'm going to unplug, and that's with six channel, that's a PFL, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's six on both, and one on both. So I'm on one on both. Now I am going to turn this up into the recorder and we will listen to the X32. And you should be able to hear that in the task cam here. And as I go down, You can hear the increase in noise as we solo down um, and increase the amount of A to D and D to A conversions we're listening to on the X32. Now, I haven't changed gains on anything else. I'm going to unplug the X32 from the console. And let's do the same thing for the Yamaha. Ooh, that wasn't totally fair. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to unplug the Yamaha as well. And let's start that again. X32 one. All right. Now we'll unplug that and we'll plug the Yamaha into the exact same input. Six channels of Yamaha noise. And let's go back to six channels of X32 noise. And Yamaha. X32. And Yamaha. Well, ain't that the shit? What um, is going on there? We've got. Oh, and then. That background there, that's the analogs. That's the system noise that we're piling on top of that was equal for both. So that's both of them plugged into the same input. Everything's calibrated. Everything's identical. And it's kind of screwy. We see 10 times as much noise on the X32, but we're hearing twice as much noise on the Yamaha. This Yamaha noise is in the audible range and the X32 noise is a bunch of high frequency stuff that we can't hear. It's above what's being heard. So it looks terrible on the scope, but is inaudible to us. I think I can demonstrate this.
The scope shows that the X32 is noisier, but our ears are telling us that the CL1 is noisier. Let's go ahead and take a look. I've got the green trace here. Now the green trace here is what's coming out of this little console. Now I can turn that down and turn that down and we can see the noise of There's the X32. There's the Yamaha. If you notice, the sound of the X32 is all in the high. So if I turn the high frequencies down, I turn the low frequencies up, and then we listen to it. X32. Yamaha. X32. Yamaha. What we're seeing on the scope is primarily frequencies that are above what we can hear. So it looks terrible on the scope. And yes, the X32 is noisier, but we can't hear the noise that it's creating. The CL1 is quieter, measurement wise, voltage wise. But the noise is all centered in something that is very audible. All right. Um, cool, cool. I was pretty shocked at this um, and I continue to be um, surprised. And that's the beauty of testing stuff out and not basing things on assumptions. Um, let's see what these things actually do and not just assume because it costs more, it is better or that they've thought things out. Um, everything's not what it seems. I don't know. Um, but it's fun to figure it out. Cool, cool. Thanks for joining.